As a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a super sigma alpha male cryptocurrency shitcoin investor enthusiast, time is money. The reason why time is money is because that is the only thing in the world that you can never get back. If you are a business owner, an entrepreneur, if you want to make a bunch of money, live an extremely fulfilling, successful life and do all these crazy things, you need to spend your time wisely. There are tasks that make you no money. Admin tasks, accounting, reporting. And then there are tasks that make you money. Doing sales calls, launching campaigns, writing VSLs, writing content. As a smart entrepreneur who wants to scale and make a lot of money, you should optimize your life and business in a way that the only thing you have to do is the tasks that generate money. So in this video, I want to show you how to leverage an executive assistant. You can literally pay someone $100 a month to handle a few really low level tasks. As long as you make a thousand bucks a month, you shouldn't be doing everything by yourself. Let's say we have two guys. We have John and John is a Chad Sigma Mega Peaky Blinder entrepreneur. He works 30 hours a week, six hours Monday to Friday, and he relaxes on weekends. And he spends those 30 hours on doing extremely high level stuff. He spends it on sales calls. He spends it on writing via sales. He spends it on launching new campaigns he spends that 30 hours only on stuff that makes money. And then let's say that there's Mark. And Mark works 60 hours a week, but half of Mark's time is spent on tasks that are not generating him money. Admin, accounting, reporting, buying domains, scraping leads. So in this scenario, John and Mark, they both put in the same amount of work in actual revenue generating tasks. But the difference is that John, who only works 30 hours a week compared to Mark, who works 60, John is going to produce way higher quality work because his brain is more refreshed. He has more mental capacity. He has more energy. He doesn't have to focus on so many things. He has a better flow state and he just makes more money. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get an excellent assistant, how to train them because that is the hard part that everyone struggles with and how to optimize it for long term growth and for you to actually benefit from it. The one thing that we need to understand is there are a lot of really, really, really talented excellent assistants and assistants out there in the world. If you work with someone like that, your experience is going to be extremely easy. They are really, really active about it. But the small problem with that is usually assistants with that experience tend to earn a pretty nice income. Talking like five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars a month. At least I don't really have 10k a month to spend on an exit assistant. So I had to take the other approach. Taking someone with a bit less experience and training them up myself. This way you can save a lot of money. And you can have an exit assistant who works on project basis, on hourly basis or on a monthly retainer. If you are making like two, three, four, five thousand a month, then probably an exit assistant with an hourly rate or a project based rate makes more sense because they can just do one accounting task a week or scrape some leads or set up some domains for you and they will invoice 100 bucks at the end of the month and you save 10 hours. And then when you start making 10, 15, 20 and you want someone who is fully focused on your business only, you can get someone a retainer, pay them 1.5 to $3,000 a month. Now you might be thinking, okay, this makes a lot of sense. And I would really, really love to have an exit assistant. Where am I going to find one? In my opinion, there's two routes to this. The first way is obviously just go on a hiring platform, go on Upwork, go on LinkedIn, go on Facebook groups and just make a job post and you can find a bunch of really talented executive assistants there. So for example, here on Upwork, I just wrote in executive assistant. I didn't put in any filters. You can find a bunch of people here, people like this with a bunch of experience, 10 years of working in the real estate niche, people doing executive assistant jobs with four years of experience as an EA, 14 years of experience, 25 years of experience in admin tasks and admin duties. And then path number two, which I personally took, is hiring from your close circle. There always has been a bit of discussion on if you should work with people from your close circle. Should you work with your friends? Should you work with your family members? I've had a great experience working with a bunch of my friends or family members. As long as you just have some boundaries in the business and as long as you just treat it as a completely separate thing. And the reason why I think it's so powerful to hire from your close circle is because of the trust element. And the easiest way that I could find how to find a person for this job, who I can fully trust, is I hired my brother. Really high class athlete, really smart guy, really ambitious guy. I trust him 100% and he's absolutely amazing at the job. So just find someone who you can fully trust and someone who understands even a little bit of the business that you are in. And then when you have interviewed them, when you have hired them, now we go into the hard part. This is something that I have really struggled a lot with and I know a lot of my friends used to struggle a lot with. They had EAs and they had different assistants, but they didn't know what kind of tasks to give them. They would end up firing them two months later and they just pretty much 
did nothing for two months. Let's say you have some kind of an accounting task. It might take you 30 minutes a week and training that task would take two hours. You might think, oh, I can just do this in 30 minutes instead of spending two hours on it. But you need to remember that saving time in these cases is compounding. Yeah, you can do it in 30 minutes and do it every single week or you can spend two hours once and let them do it for the next year. And you save the 30 minutes every single week and that compounds. First thing you want to do is you want to perform a time audit. So you start by keeping track of everything you do for a week. Rescue time or toggle. I'm totally going to track your computer activity and for non-computer tasks, keep a manual log. I personally just like to use Google Sheets and a stopwatch. So pretty much what you just do is write Monday and then you like write down all the tasks that you do and like how much time you spend doing them. And pretty much the aim here is to document every activity no matter how small. Then you go into analyzing your time audit. Once you have collected the data, analyze it, identify tasks that can be delegated to your EA. And this could include responding to emails, scheduling appointments, social media management, paying invoices, booking flights and hotels, simple research tasks, basic accounting tasks. Look at all the tasks that you have done during the week when you did the time audit and ask yourself, did this task make me any money? If I stopped doing this task, would I make less money? So take all of those tasks and write them down. Then you move into step three, which is creating a delegation list. From your analysis, create a clear list of tasks that you will delegate to your EA. Define each task, the expected outcome and the frequency. So is it a daily task, weekly task or a monthly task? You go into step four, which is inventory, your tools and accounts. Your EA will need access to in order to carry out the tasks. This can include your email or calendar, your social media accounts, invoicing software, booking platforms, etc. And remember to use a password manager like LastPass to share access securely. Then you go into step five, which is creating standard operating procedures. For each task on your delegation list, create a detailed SOP. This should include the step-by-step -step process, deadlines, examples, and the desired outcome. Use screen recording tools like Loom for processes on the computer for better clarity. After that, you go into step six. Once the SOPs are ready, conduct a training session for each task. Allow your EA to perform the task while you observe, correct any mistakes, and ensure they understand the process fully. Use this period to also give them access to the necessary tools and accounts. Then step seven, which is transition period. Monitor your EA's performance closely, provide feedback, and make necessary adjustments. Regularly review their work to ensure quality. So in some cases, you create SOPs, you train them on something, and then after a month, you realize, fuck, this is not exactly what I'm looking for, and you need to tweak the SOPs. Step eight is just regular check-ins and feedback, which is ongoing. After the transition period, have weekly check-ins to discuss tasks, performance, and any challenges. This keeps the communication line open and helps solve problems quickly. Then step nine, which is gradually expanding uh, the duties. So as your EA becomes more proficient, you can start delegating more complex tasks. Always ensure they're comfortable and confident in their current duties before adding new ones. Then step 10, which is the most important one, is regularly updating SOPs as the process changes. So as processes evolve and improve, make sure to update the respective SOPs. This helps maintain consistency and quality in your EA's work. And also resource needed, last pass, Loom, Asana. This is an extremely amazing way to go about it. And also then let's say you work with your EA for a year, you create all of these SOPs. Then let's say your EA leaves you and you need to get another one. You already have all the processes in place. Training them is going to be so much easier. You know what they should be doing. You know how they should be doing it. You know how to train them to do it. It's going to be super easy. I hope it was valuable. Like the video, subscribe. Cheers.